Diastasis recti. That's a mouthful. So what even is it and why does it matter? I mean, I had never even heard about it for the longest time. It took having four kiddos and having my last kiddo even be like four years old before I really learned about diastasis recti. So if you have it, it's definitely never too late to learn about it. So in this video, we're gonna talk about diastasis recti, what it is, what causes it, and how to check for it. And then we're gonna discuss various ways that we can actually fix it. So let's get started. So what is diastasis recti? Well, simply put, it's abdominal separation. And it's basically a large separation between your rectus abdominis muscle. And in other words, that's what we call our abs. So your rectus abdominis has two paired sides and those are parallel, and they're connected with a connective tissue called the linea alba, or the white line, because, you know, it's white. So diastasis recti occurs when that linea alba gets stretched too far and it starts to create a gap. This can happen a lot to pregnant women, and if you're like me and you've had a bunch of kids, <laughs> you probably have it, and it might be a good idea to check, and we'll talk about how to do that later. It also can happen postpartum as well. The good news is that for most cases of diastasis recti, it doesn't require surgery or anything, and it can actually be healed naturally. There's actually a study of 300 first-time mothers, and 54% of them had mild diastasis recti symptoms. And that was at six weeks postpartum, and at 12 months postpartum, 31.5% of those mothers still showed mild symptoms. When our bellies expand during pregnancy, it is completely normal that your abs have to also separate. They have to make room for that baby growing in there. If you've had multiple pregnancies, like I have, you you probably have a higher likelihood that you have it because your body has had to expand and come back several times. Now, obesity also plays a role in whether or not you have prevalent diastasis recti symptoms. And that's not just for women. Men as well who are obese can also show these same symptoms. It's basically just thinking about that abdominis recti muscle expanding to allow more space, whether it's a baby or it's extra visceral fat. And you can also get diastasis recti from lifting super heavy weights with poor form that your abdominal muscles just don't hold up and it causes that separation. So focusing on form is always a good idea. All right, so how do you find out if you have it? Well, fortunately, there is a self-examination that you can do and I will talk about that right now. So if you're six weeks postpartum and you just had a baby, first off, congratulations, hug that little cutie pies, but you probably have it, so don't fear. You're just six weeks postpartum just give it some time. For those of us who are not six weeks postpartum, what you would do is you would lay on your back, bend your knees, and you wanna kinda of lift your head up and look towards your belly with your head. And that's gonna tighten your core a little bit. And then you're gonna to want to intentionally try to tighten your ab muscles. Then you're gonna use two fingers and you're gonna to try to find that center area. And you're gonna gently press down both above and below your belly button to kind of feel out if you have a gap. Now, the size of the gap is important here. A little tiny gap, like a little valley for your fingers is completely normal. What you'll wanna see is that if you actually can fit in more than two fingers, if the gap is larger and you can actually fit in more space there, then likely you have diastasis recti. Now, if you can't figure it out, you can always see a physical therapist or a doctor and they can help diagnose it for you. The least expensive way to fix diastasis recti is through just physical therapy and focusing on your core muscles. So core strengthening programs can be very effective in decreasing that gap for diastasis recti and then just improving it naturally. And that's especially if those programs are continued for six months. And I know that sounds like a lot of time, but we are probably using our core in our exercises anyway. It's just kind of adding in a few extra exercises, do our daily routine or every other day or twice a week or something like that so that you're focusing on decreasing that gap. Now, I will say, if you're watching this video and you have a large gap, you might wanna discuss potential solutions with your doctor because some severe cases do require surgery. So I definitely wanna stress, I am not a doctor and I would recommend you speak with your own medical professional so that you can know for sure sure the best treatment for yourself. I also want to stress that it's never too late to work on decreasing the gap. It's always a good idea to have a strong core. If we don't have a strong core, it's going to impact our ability to hold ourselves up. It's going to cause hip pain. It's going to cause back pain, maybe even neck pain because you're so tired and you're pulling yourself up all the time. The stronger our core is, the stronger everything else is. It all starts with the core. You know, just start slow once you identify it and then just work towards decreasing the gap. For me, it's 
took about four or five months to really not see too much of a gap anymore. I still have a little bit of one and I continue to work on it. I find the core exercises that I do very effective and helpful. If you want me to discuss what exercises I do, um, I can do a whole video on that for you. And if this is motivating you to really start focusing on your fitness, check out my cleanish movement program that focuses on fitness, nutrition, and mindset and is a great 90 day program to get you just motivated and in the right mindset and getting physical activity on a daily basis. And I will see you in the next video.